You might have noticed that I speak really clearly and slowly, and if you have, you might guess that it's to make my videos more accessible to people or something. But it isn't. It's because for about 22 years now, I've had friends and students who hardly know any English. I talk like this offline, too. It's a habit. This week, I wanted to take a break from my usual videos about the state, capitalism, racism, and other big problems, and tell you all about teaching. I've been a teacher for about 20 years now, and a professional teacher of English as a second language for about 15 years. And I think we should all be teachers. I realize the title of this video is a bit controversial, because when we think of teaching, we think of instructing classes full of children on things they don't really want to learn. And that's not easy. If you want to learn how to become a public school teacher, this video could be useful, but I wouldn't want to encourage anyone to become disciplinarians when they could become educators instead. This video is part of a playlist on school and education, and you might want to check out the whole thing if you don't know where I'm coming from, especially if you're new to this channel. Effective education centers the student, not the teacher and the state-approved curriculum. And that's the kind of teaching I'm talking about here. When I say teaching is easy, I don't mean it's something you can master in a weekend. It takes time learning how to teach effectively, a lot of which you learn with your students. But becoming a teacher is not like becoming a doctor. Not everyone can be a doctor. But if you can help people learn, you can be a teacher. If you've already watched the rest of my playlist on education, you'll know some of my many criticisms of the school, from its demand for obedience and conformity to the fact that the teacher is the center of the classroom. A lot of how to improve a class flows naturally from the critique. For example, homework has been shown by several studies to have little to no effect on learning, so we should stop giving kids homework. In the kind of places I work, we already know school isn't an effective way of learning. My job is basically to make up for the huge gaps in the education of my students. Not that I blame any individual teachers. The whole school system is designed in such a way as to punish students and teachers alike. How is someone supposed to teach 30 children forced to sit in one place for an hour without resorting to commands and threats? As such, I don't have much advice on how to teach in a normal school. I don't think we should be trying to improve school. I think we should abolish the school. I think especially in this pandemic, the school has revealed how useless it is and how important it is for students and their parents to take education out of the classroom and out of the hands of administrators. Again, I've got a whole playlist on why, so you can watch it and I don't have to go into it here. Here, I'm not talking about how to lay down punishments and grade standardized tests. I'm talking about facilitating learning. You can be a teacher. Here's how. First, know your students. This part is fundamental. Know what your students want to learn and what your role is in that learning. Your role depends largely on how good they are, how skilled. Most of us learn to speak and read from our parents. We learn through practice, through a constant interplay with the expert language speaker. They correct us immediately so we can immediately incorporate what we've just learned into the next sentence. We use language every day, so any corrections we get are relevant. If I try to teach you English but you never use it outside class, you might remember way less than if you used it several times a day. Either way, if you're new to the subject, 
I, as a teacher, will be holding your hand, guiding you patiently through the basics until you've got it. If you know the subject pretty well, but just need some adjustments here and there, like a PhD student, my role as a teacher is much more hands-off. I'll let you talk or build or run or whatever the subject is, and I'll have some notes and advice at the end. It also helps to know what, uh, how students want to learn. Now, I'm not talking about learning styles. Don't worry too much about learning styles. You've, you've heard of them, right? Yeah, it's been debunked. There aren't visual learners and auditory learners and kinesthetic learners. We're all all of those things. Some people might be better than others at one or the other thing, but all those things are useful when teaching or explaining. When I say we should know how they want to learn, I mean we should know their favorite way of learning. The more the student enjoys the class, the more likely they are to remember it, as long as the fun facilitates learning rather than distracting from it. I've had a lot of students who've become high-level English students because they love one or another TV shows and they watch them over and over and they learn from them, or because they love certain musicians and they learn the lyrics. It saves these students huge amounts of money to take control of their own learning. So when they come to me, my role is more like that of an advisor. They ask me to check the finer points of their grammar, suggest better vocabulary than what they're using now, give them advice on how to learn more, and so on. So find out what people are into and see if you can incorporate that into a learning plan. Number two, give your students as much freedom as possible, especially the freedom to fail. So to start, we could ditch the desks and the classrooms. See, modern schools are designed to take away students' freedom. That's a great way to limit how much they can learn. If we get rid of desks and classrooms, that's a good start. We don't learn best by sitting in one place and listening. And ditch the schedules, too. 60-minute classes, or 55 or whatever, ensure some students don't have enough time to get it all, and other students are sitting there bored. Mark Twain, or maybe Mark Twain, I mean, who the hell knows now, once said that you can't really teach anyone anything. You can just make them realize it for themselves. That's pretty much what Paulo Freire says in Pedagogy of the Oppressed. If you're trying to empower people, you can't just throw facts at them and hope they stick. And by the way, if you think it's ironic that that's just what I'm doing here, bear in mind, this isn't a class. It's a presentation. You want students to decide what they want to learn and how they're going to learn. I get that there are things you want kids to know that they might not want to learn, like math or reading, whatever. It's good to let them try everything and learn the basics. The way we treat kids, you'd think they couldn't figure out anything for themselves. But when you leave them alone, they learn what they want to learn, and they even make up their own games. You could give them a challenge, a learning goal, and then sit back and let them figure it out for themselves. You can check their progress and make yourself available for their questions, but you probably don't need to micromanage them. I don't know, it depends on the kids and how big a group they are. Smaller groups able to move around, go online and talk to each other without limits are the ideal. As you can see, you don't need years of training to facilitate a class like this. You should know the topic, be patient and communicate succinctly, and then let the students go ahead. But when students get older, they should transition toward letting them, you should transition, I suppose, to letting them control their own learning. First, what problem are they trying to solve? In other words, if 
if they want to acquire knowledge, what are they going to use it for? A course can be structured around a goal, like a project. This is the outcome. How do we get there? Depending on the subject, students might never need to take or study notes because what they learn is relevant and they use it immediately, so they remember. You can spend time with them brainstorming what they want to do, what they want to learn, how they're going to learn it, plus developing standards so they know if they've reached their goal or not. And there's no need for rewards or punishments when students are directing their own learning because their achievements are the reward. It should be pretty easy with adults, this kind of thing, but even with kids, you can do it. It might take longer with kids, but it might take longer with adults because adults have gone through years of school and they might still expect the teacher to do everything while they remain these passive vessels who take notes and learn later. Give your students the space to fail. There should be no stigma attached to failure. Failure just means they're not ready to succeed yet. It's easy to go too fast for some learners and even get impatient with them. Students and teachers alike should always bear in mind we all learn different things at different speeds and everyone makes mistakes. If a student's making mistakes, it's possible it's your fault as a teacher. Maybe you didn't explain it right. Have you used examples? Have you used analogies? Did you over explain the idea? No such thing, uh, bad student, only bad teacher. But there's no need to assign blame or pass judgment. Just ask what the root of the mistake is. As a teacher, you can work with them to identify and correct it. And third, encourage collaboration. The modern school system encourages competition and ranking. Your student should be the best student, right? <laughs> no. Your student already is the best student at something. But in the future, they'll need to work with others who are better at other things. Why not teach them how to do that now? Why not teach them they don't have to be the best at everything? That other people's skills can complement theirs, so working together is the skill they should be learning. Other people aren't obstacles and rivals, they're partners. Instead of instructing children in isolation from others and telling them to figure out the answer for themselves, right from the start we should treat them as a group that's going to figure out these things together. Everyone has something to contribute, and if you see people who aren't contributing, you can take them somewhere out of the spotlight and find out what the problem is. A teacher might take the role of a coach or the chair of a meeting at first. But as they progress, students can take over those roles too. Ideally, as a teacher, you want to make yourself irrelevant. People ask me, what we should do to make the world better, to stop these systems ruining so many lives, and I have several answers, including mutual aid, community self-defense, that kind of thing. But really, for now, the priority should be educating yourself and others. See, I can give you ideas, but the better you understand the problem, the clearer the solutions will be to you. Since there's not much we can change alone, we'll need to work in groups, and that's why we can educate ourselves and each other in groups. A book club, for example. You all read a book with a radical message, Emma Goldman, let's say, or as I always suggest to people, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Yes, there's a link in the description. You read the book, you share your ideas with each other, you set goals together, you contribute what you can to those goals. To me, there are plenty of opportunities to be a teacher in a book club or discussion group or 
even a group of illegalists. It's just that we think of teaching as being one person who knows everything. Really, you just need to know a bit more, and you can learn as a group. As you act to transform the world around you, you learn more. And then you can teach what you've learned to more people. If you have an op opinions and ideas on teaching, let me know in the comments. I'm sure I've left out lots of things I've picked up over the years. If there's anything else I can tell you about teaching, leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll help. In fact, if you don't leave a comment, you're getting an F!